If you're working to get your next cruise planned, a big part of that is budgeting. It's definitely not my favorite part of the planning process by any means, but it has to be done. As we were planning for our next cruise, it occurred to me that there's a lot of expenses that we often overlook when we think about the general cost of a cruise or the cost of the stateroom itself. Some of these things you don't have to pay for, and knowing that can save you a ton of money. So we thought it might be helpful to share a few of the things that we sometimes just space out on, forget to factor into our cruise budget. And of course, this won't apply to everyone in every situation, but if a couple of these things apply to you, then hey, we are super happy to be able to help. In the past, we've talked a lot about the more obvious hidden costs, and you're going to want to catch our first video on the topic that's linked down below. For example, we talk about stuff like gratuities, drinks, photos, Wi-Fi, specialty dining. Those things tend to be set, sometimes a little easier to factor in. But these next things are kind of less obvious expenses associated with cruising that we don't want to like sneak up on you. By the way, if you're new here, I'm Sherry with CruiseTipsTV.com. With over 20 years of cruise experience, our website, our podcast called Cruise Tips TV Unplugged, and our informational videos are going to inspire you to make every cruise your dream cruise. We'd love to invite you to subscribe if you are new here. And if you're already part of our awesome cruising community, your thumbs ups make all the difference in the world. Please, please, please tap those thumbs ups. It is awesome awesome when you do that. All right, let's get into the list. Number one is a big one, pre-cruise spending. We're going to start off one that maybe just applies to me, but I have a sneaking suspicion that a whole lot of you out there are just like us. Yeah, it's pre-cruise shopping, right? Raise your hand if you're like me and you just have to shop for some new cruise clothes like this dress. Okay, you can put your hands down. It's the interweb. I can't really see you, but seriously, new swimsuit, formal dress, cover up. I mean, all of the things, right? Maybe even one of those hats that say something fun like cruise hair, don't care. And as much as I say you should never buy new shoes for a cruise, I still totally do it. What about all those other things like travel size toiletries, luggage, new tech gadgets, chargers, SD cards, batteries? It's all part of the fun, but the bottom line is it can totally add up. I know I spent a little more time on this than I planned on, but you guys, I just love shopping. And for me, this can be a really huge unbudgeted expense. So don't forget to factor in that pre-cruise spending into your overall budget. Now, if you want a challenge, and I think it can be done, if you really want to save some money, challenge yourself to do a zero spending cruise. Do not buy anything beforehand. I mean, a zero spending pre-cruise, right? You're probably going to spend a little on the cruise, but give it a try and see if you can go zero new clothes, zero new stuff, and see how it goes if you feel like you need to budget that way. Number two, hotel costs. Ooh, hotel costs are something that we often overlook. And you know, those pre and post hotel stays, they're pretty much necessary, but we don't take them into account when budgeting for a cruise. At easily over a hundred bucks a night, these costs can totally decimate the old budget. When you're flying into your embarkation port, at least for us, a pre-cruise hotel stay is usually unavoidable. Sometimes, I'll even need to fly before to go to the airport, stay there one night, then there's a pre-cruise at the port, and then one after. It can be up to three nights in a hotel, maybe even more. But there are some ways you can save. First up, book your hotel as early as you know you're going to need it to get the best prices, and then watch the prices. Number two, use your credit card or hotel chain loyalty points to book your hotel or totally save on the cost. Now, there's other expenses associated with hotel stays too, right? Like think about meals, drinks at the hotels. Let's face it, those are not cheap. Those on-site restaurants are pricey. And let's not forget the parking fees at a lot of these hotels. Now, if you're driving directly to your port, then you probably don't have to worry about this one. But you will have to worry about number three cruise terminal parking. Yeah, parking at the terminal on the first day of your cruise is totally expensive. Sometimes it can be upwards of $20 a day per vehicle. It's almost always worth looking for an alternative solution. Don't get me wrong, it's super convenient to park at the terminal, and a lot of times, you guys, it's what we do. But in many cases, there are some ways you can save money on this one. We usually start by checking to see if any hotels in the area offer a stay and cruise package with a shuttle service to the port so we can leave our car at the hotel until the end of the cruise. Barring that, we look for cheaper solutions around the cruise terminal but not on site. Number four, 
travel insurance. Travel insurance really isn't the most fun thing we talk about here at Cruise Tips TV, but you guys, it's so important. Travel insurance makes this list because many people don't budget for it and they bail out when their travel agent offers it to them. However, it is one of the most critical investments every time you cruise. So I'm going to say this is one thing you should spend the money on, even if it means scrimping in some other areas. It's one of those things that if you don't do it and you find yourself needing it, well, it can be devastating. Please at least consider budgeting for this. Depending on what type of policy, travel insurance can help you with unexpected delays while flying or driving to your port. It can also help you in the event of a medical emergency on the cruise or on an excursion. And there's tons of different types of coverage. So be sure to work carefully with a travel agent to make sure that your policy covers every single element of your cruise, including the flight to get you to the cruise ship. Because if you book directly with the cruise lines insurance, that may not cover the flight. Your travel agent can help you here. Number five, Wi-Fi. More and more of us are finding ourselves totally tethered to the digital world, right? Like it or not, it's a thing. But none of the mass market cruise lines are really including Wi-Fi with the cruise fare. Sure, some of them might package it with the fare if you pay more, right? Like Norwegian's free at sea, Princess Plus and Premier, but more and more, staying connected at sea is totally necessary for most of us. Now, I can say that data packages are pretty critical for our family. Data packages, Wi-Fi packages, whatever you want to call them, they vary in cost from cruise line to cruise line, but overall, we're not seeing the price go down. We're not seeing a trend towards more affordable internet options. The problem here is this can be something that people forget to budget for or factor into their pre-cruise planning costs because the assumption, if you're new to cruising, is like with many forms of travel that maybe the Wi-Fi is included with your stay. Nope, not the case with cruise travel, so plan accordingly and research those costs. Now here's a pro tip for you. Call your cell phone provider and ask if they have international options for the days you're in port. Then you could skip the Wi-Fi package and connect to your cell phone provider on port days. This can save you hundreds of dollars if you're willing to forego internet connectivity on C days. Number six, transportation costs. Now, I know we've talked about this in past videos, but getting from your home to the airport, airport to the pre-cruise hotel, hotel to ship, it can get really pricey and can add hundreds to your cruise budget, especially in pricey places where they have like surge pricing, right? While there may not be a way to avoid this cost, you could consider asking a friend or a family member for a ride. If this is not an option for you, which it definitely isn't for me because I live several hours from the cruise port and the airport, you might try Uber or Lyft to save yourself some money over the cruise ship shuttles. So Uber and Lyft, typically cheaper than cruise ship shuttles. That was a lot of S's. Sorry, guys. <laughs> they also give you more freedom to head to the airport or cruise port at your leisure instead of waiting for the expensive shuttle to load full of people and then take you at their convenience. Number seven, let's talk about food for a minute. Room service fees on a cruise can sneak up on you, you guys, but you don't have to spend on room service to have a great cruise. While it's convenient to order food to your cabin, and it's kind of fun, many cruise lines have started charging hefty fees for room service, even for simple, single items. Now, to avoid these costs, simply take advantage of the complimentary dining options on the ship, like the buffet or the dining room, or check to see if some of the room service items are included in your cruise fare. Some cruise lines have both free and upcharge room service items. Number eight, ooh, this is a sneaky one, you guys, corkage fees. Have you ever heard of corkage fees? These corkage fees can add up quickly if you enjoy bringing your own wine or champagne to savor in your cabin or for special occasions. To bypass these fees, consider purchasing your alcoholic beverage packages on board or opting for the drink package offered by the cruise line. Or check to see if the cruise line waives corkage fees if you open the bottle of wine in your room instead of in the dining room. This can be an incredible workaround to those corkage fees. Number nine, fees for thermal suites and adult-only areas might shock you. It can be really pricey. While these exclusive spaces offer relaxation and tranquility, and there's a place for them, they often come with really big extra charges. Now, to avoid these costs, explore the ship's complimentary relaxation areas or 
plan your time on board to enjoy the included amenities. Sometimes places like an aft pool deck tend to have a quieter vibe than the more centrally located family pools. But this isn't always the case. You can also create your own relaxation day by staying on the ship on a port day and creating your own relaxing oasis. I love doing this. Number 10. This is our last one, but hang in there because this is a good one. Fees for attractions beyond the standard cruise fare can quickly escalate your spending. From roller coasters to go-karts, many of these onboard activities come with an additional price tag. To manage your budget, research the included amenities and attractions before your cruise and prioritize those that align with your interests and your budget. And talk to your kids about this. Don't let them overspend in these different places, whether it's an arcade, on the go-karts, anything. All right, friends, that is right. We are done with this one, but we have many more tips on budgeting for a cruise on the way. Let us know in the comments what hidden cruise costs took you most by surprise. Now below, we're gonna link to part one of this video and our awesome Amazon cruise store to help you start planning your cruise and shop for your cruise on a budget. Until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. Bye-bye.